Bush going for it on fourth down. Eleven penalties for 131 yards, and that led to big plays for the opposing team, which was the theme at Heinz Field Sunday as the Sam Bradfordless Vikings got bullied by the Steelers in a 26-9 loss. Martavis goes right by him in a huge completion for this Pittsburgh offense. Case Keenum was signed in the offseason to take over for Sean Hill and be a dependable backup that could keep games close by not turning the ball over and let one of the league's best defenses do what they do best. Sunday, however, with little time to prepare, Keenum was terrorized, tortured, and tormented all day by constant pressure from a speedy and athletic Steelers front seven. According to PFF, Keenum was pressured on 46% of his dropbacks, completing only 6 of 16 throws under pressure. Suddenly, this fresh new offensive line combination that looked so good Monday night looks highly vulnerable when defenses know they are passing. Mike Tomlin made sure Keenum never looked comfortable as he held onto the ball too long and was too frazzled to go through his progressions and find his open target. The ball comes out quick and on time out of that bunch. This is a first down completion. Same, similar to the third down he converted in the first half. Of course, Keenum didn't get much help from Dalvin Cook or the running game either. Take out his one long run of 25 yards, and Cook managed just 39 yards rushing on 11 carries. Cook was not to blame, however, as he was suffocated behind the line of scrimmage far too often and was rarely given any running lanes to choose from. The Steelers got up big early in this one, and Mike Tomlin pinned their ears back and laid the pressure on thick. Just watch these three consecutive plays early in the second quarter where Keenum drops back to pass, only to find his pocket flooded with Steeler black and yellow. Watching these makes you wonder how Keenum only ended up with two sacks, a deflating end to the drive that would be a precursor for things to come. A shorter version, just like J.J. On second and ten, again pressure on Keenum, and he throws it out of bounds. He would have had time now. Stephon Diggs is wide open running down the sideline. There is a bust in coverage down here by Pittsburgh. Look how wide open he is, just a little bit. Oh, three receivers to the right, third down and ten. More pressure on Keenum, forced to get rid of it. While the O-line will be under the microscope this week, Defense and special teams also had huge gaffes that were uncharacteristic, and it started with an unlikely culprit in Brian Robeson, who jumped off sides on a critical fourth and one with the game still tied. A penalty that clearly deflated the team more than it should have. Then, a botched fake punt and other miscues all added up to a sloppy game for a normally tight-knit unit under Mike Zimmer, which made you ask yourself early on, if it was just going to be one of those days for the Vikings, who have a history of struggling on the road, outdoors, on grass, over the last few decades. The receiver set. Wilford Bryant of the snap. Penalty markers. Roethlisberger going deep for Bryant. He dives and makes a spectacular catch. Last year, but watch him kind of ease out. Are we going to do it? We're going to do it? We're going to do it? Got him. Other plays that made you realize the Vikings weren't leaving Pittsburgh with a win. Stephon Diggs called for a sketchy at best offensive pass interference, negating a big pass play and turning into a drive killing penalty. And the almighty Harrison Smith, who's known for his bone crushing hits and tone setting physicality, got absolutely truck sticked and laid out by, get this, a rookie wide receiver. Like I said, on Sunday in Heinz Field, it was just one of those days. Look at the block he puts on Harrison Smith. Wow. But lastly, while the Vikings shot themselves in the foot repeatedly Sunday, it's been easy to overlook this simple fact. The Steelers are pretty damn good too. Antonio Brown, Martavis Bryant, and Le'Veon Bell all flashed a superstar trade at one point or another Sunday, reminding us all that if you make mistakes like the Vikings did, they will capitalize and make you pay exactly why they are 2-0 and a quiet Super Bowl contender. If I know Mike Zimmer, he'll use this loss as a way to fix the mistakes and weaknesses 
that were exposed by the Steelers now while it's still very early in this season. Stay tuned for plenty more Vikings breakdowns. For now, I'm Luke Inman, signing off. Call it jump cut, the LR2 button that he has, and then just the awareness on his feet to get up over Linval Joseph. Great runner, great player, very involved in the offense. Rock and bomb, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah!